International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa returned to Bahrain following a visit to Egypt in which he met with the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi. His Majesty also participated in the tripartite summit with the Jordanian monarch, His Majesty King Abdullah II ibn al Hussein, and the Egyptian President in Sharm al Sheikh, in which they discussed the historic, deep rooted fraternal relations and the course of cooperation and coordination in various issues of common interest, as well as the latest regional and international developments. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad. Al Khalifa was at the forefront to receive His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness the Deputy King Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Group Chief Executive Officer of Vital Russell Hardy at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness emphasized the importance of investing in the energy sector to support other economic sectors in line with the Kingdom's goals of comprehensive development led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of further strengthening investments in the oil and gas sector to meet future demands in line with Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030. He highlighted the Kingdom's efforts to further develop the renewable renewable energy sector by adopting innovative solutions and initiatives that protect the environment in line with the Sustainable Development Goals. The latest regional and international developments in the energy sector were also discussed. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Chairman of the Oil and Gas Holding Company, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Oil and Environment, Dr. Mohammed bin Mbarak bin Dana, also attended the meeting. For the first time, Bahrain has won the position of Deputy CEO of the Basel Convention on the Transboundary Movement of Hazardous Wastes and their disposal for the next session, and as a repre representative of Asia and the Pacific Ocean following its election at the meeting of the parties to the Basel, Stockholm and Rotterdam Conventions, which concluded its work in Geneva, Switzerland. On the occasion, the personal representative of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for the Environment, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that Bahrain's election is a remarkable achievement and proof of its interest in protecting the environment, which is a result of the vision, strategy and directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the support and follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness expressed thanks and appreciation to all Asian countries for their support to Bahrain to attain this vital position, affirming that the Kingdom deserves it and will be the best representative. He highlighted Bahrain's status and reputation among advanced countries in the environment and climate protection field. He added that it will contribute to the exchange of experiences and information and will be applied to in Bahrain to develop the waste management system and policies. His Highness noted that Bahrain will always endeavor to raise its level of compliance with all all environmental conventions through its presence in executive offices and committees. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, Board Chairman of the Oil and Gas Holding Company, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with the CEO of ENI, Claudio Descalzi, in the presence of the Minister of Oil and Environment, Dr. Mohammed bin Mbarak bin Dana, Tatwir Petroleum Board Chairman, Engineer Faisal Al Mahrous, Acting Managing Director of Tatwir Petroleum, Ghassan Ali Lamhanna, ENI Director of Primary Operation and Chief Executive in the Middle East region, Fuad Kirkchi. His Highness affirmed the ongoing development of the oil and gas sector in line with the vision of His Majesty the King and the aspirations of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He pointed out the keenness of the oil and gas holding company to develop this vital sector to attain the goals of the Economic Vision 2030. His Highness underlined the keenness of Noga Holding to exchange experiences between Bahrain and Italy to develop the oil and gas sector and promote the oil economy in the Kingdom. He discussed with Descalzi ways of boosting bilateral cooperation in various fields. 
The Speaker of the Representatives Council for the Yazainal met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Kyrgyzstan, Zinbek Goldbayev, and affirmed the legislative authorities' support to enhancing the bilateral relations and the Parliament's keenness to speed up their developments and growth at various levels. During the meeting, they reviewed means of bilateral cooperation between the two friendly countries, in addition to discussing a number of regional and international issues of common interest. Zainal stressed the importance of exchanging mutual parliamentary visits to achieve the desired development goals. The Kyrgyz minister stressed the great interest of his country's government to strengthening and developing relations between the two countries in all fields. The Speaker of the Representatives Council for the Yezinal met with Chairman of the Russian Arab Parliamentary Friendship Committee, Representative Vladimir Gutniov. She affirmed that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King, always calls for spreading a culture of moderation, peace and harmony among countries and people, and constantly seeks to resolve disputes between countries by peaceful and diplomatic means and through political settlements. During the meeting, they discussed ways to support and strengthen bilateral relations in all fields, as well as developments in the regional and international situations and exert further efforts to combat terrorism. The Russian representative affirmed keenness to strengthen the bilateral relations to activate areas of distinguished cooperation in many projects in order to open new horizons of cultural, educational, technological and investment cooperation. The President of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, met with the editors in chief of local newspapers and a number of officials in order to inform them of the latest developments related to the implementation of the National Health Insurance Program and the project for self management of primary health care centers and government hospitals. He stressed keenness to, to harness all capabilities and efforts necessary to continue developing the quality and efficiency of health services by raising the level of health care and its sustainability and achieving advanced rates of competitiveness, transparency and justice in order to achieve Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030. The President also stressed the important role played by the local press and the national media as an active partner in supporting efforts to implement all national and development projects, especially those related to the health sector. He affirmed that these initiatives are developed in accordance to the best international standards and based on the future priorities that are based on providing the best medical care for patients. The Minister of Interior and Chairman of the National Anti-Drug Committee, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah al-Khalifa, witnessed a celebration to mark the International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking, which was attended by senior officials. The Interior Minister expressed thanks and appreciation for the sincere efforts of the committee and the role of the Anti-Narcotics Directorate and all security authorities in protecting the community. He asserted the continuous work to launch a national anti-drug interactive initiative for all segments of society, stating that combating narcotics is the community's responsibility through the cooperation of all organizations within an integrated community partnership system. He noted the importance of ongoing security awareness within an innovative approach to combat negative phenomena and address their impact on social peace. He hailed the launch of the second edition of the National Plan to Combat Narcotics and Psychotropic Substances to contribute to the success of the first edition launched in 2015. The Director General of Criminal Investigation and Forensic Science affirmed that the plan's first phase achieved a 97% success rate by implementing 257 initiatives. The accomplishments reflect the security, legislative and preventative efforts of the Directorate in cooperation with concerned security authorities and constructive community partnership. The Interior Minister launched the second edition of the plan 2022-2026 that includes community security partnership to fight drug abuse, supervision, development and reinforcement of the role of the community, media and religious organizations. The minister then honored the affiliates of the security directorates for their anti-drug roles.
very important uh, plan and uh, to uh, understand the importance of this plan, we should focus that it's the second edition. And the first edition, approximately, it reached 100% uh, success. Uh, this plan is a very fruitful plan. It's uh, going to be touched by the uh, people of Bahrain, inshallah, in the coming days, uh, that it's very, very success plan. I hope uh, it's going to be uh, a win and a victory for uh, us in face of uh, this crime. Uh, as uh, the custodian of uh, the United Nations uh, three conventions on uh, counter-narcotics, uh, we are proud of the level of partnership we have with the Kingdom of uh, Bahrain, particularly with uh, the National Committee on Combating uh, uh, Drugs, uh, uh, its president, uh, the uh, uh, Minister of Interior, and the member agencies to this committee, the Ministries of Justice, uh, Foreign Affairs, uh, uh, Education, uh, Youth, and all uh, uh, the member stakeholders of counter narcotics in uh, the Kingdom of Bahrain. Actually, the second launch or the second phase of the national strategy that was developed primarily by uh, uh, the national expertise uh, with all our help and support and international experts and pursuant to the international uh, uh, standards on uh, drug demand reduction and drug supply uh, uh, reduction. Bal balancing the two makes uh, uh, this uh, uh, strategy actually a model that we always seek to present through uh, our uh, programs as the unique model uh, that was developed uh, uh, um, uh, due to uh, the full commitment of the Kingdom of Bahrain and its national committee. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Bar Rashid Al Zayani, met the Kyrgyz Minister of Foreign Affairs, Zinbek Golubayev, and his accompanying delegation on the occasion of his visit to the kingdom. The minister affirmed Bahrain's keenness to strengthen bilateral relations through the exchange of official visits and support for dialogue and political consultation. The Kyrgyz minister praised the kingdom's pivotal role under its presidency of the Asian Cooperation Dialogue and its efforts to promote security, stability, and regional and global peace. The two sides reviewed the relations of cooperation and close friendship between the two countries and means to develop bilateral cooperation to serve the common interest. The two sides signed an agreement between the governments of the two countries on exempting holders of diplomatic, service and special passports from visa requirements and an MOU on political consultation between the two countries' foreign ministers. Bahrain will ban outdoor work during afternoon in July and August. The Ministry of Labor announced that the ban of work under direct sunlight and in open places will run from noon until 4 p.m., starting from 1st of July. The ministry added that this aims to protect workers and ensure their safety from heat stress, sunstroke, and various summer diseases, and to reduce occupational accidents during the hottest months of the year. The Minister of Labor, Jamil Hamedan, said that Bahrain is committed to banning afternoon work under searing temperatures and high humidity in line with human rights principles and the need to provide a safe and healthy work environment, adding that the strict application of the ban in the previous years has contributed to reducing the risks of work injuries. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Zayed Zayani, headed the delegation of the Kingdom of Bahrain in the 62nd GCC Commerce Ministerial meeting, Committee meeting with the participation of the Ministers of Commerce of GCC countries and Secretary General of the GCC, Dr. Nayef Al Hajraf. The meeting was hosted by Saudi Arabia in the presence of Assistant Under Secretary for Domestic and Foreign Trade, Sheikh Hamad bin Salman Al Khalifa, and Assistant Under Secretary of Indust Industrial Development, Dr. Khalid Fahad Al Alawi. The meeting addressed a number of topics on the agenda, including Prom promoting joint Gulf business in an effort to integrate commerce between member countries and reviewed the work of the committees of the GCC Commerce Ministerial Committee in the areas of SME development and entrepreneurship, domestic and foreign trade, e-commerce, as well as consumer protection, in addition to other topics of common interest. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Zayed Zayani, headed the delegation of the Kingdom of Bahrain participating in the meeting between GCC Ministers of Commerce with the UK Secretary of State for International Trade and Marie Trevelyan as part of the 62nd GCC Ministerial Committee meeting in the presence of GCC Secretary General Dr. Nayef Al Hajra. The meeting featured the signing of a joint statement by GCC Secretary General to launch free trade negotiations between the GCC countries and the UK. 
The Minister of Health, Dr. Jalila Hassan, stressed Bahrain's keenness to provide the best health services to citizens. She praised royal directors to facilitate the mission of Bahraini pilgrims and provide them with the needed care and services. The minister commended the great efforts of Saudi Arabia to serve pilgrims and help them perform their Hajj rituals with ease and security. She wished this year's Hajj season every success. The head of the Coordination and Medical Committee of Bahrain Hajj Mission, Dr. Ibrahim Abed, thanked the ministry for its cooperation, noting the importance of making the necessary efforts to secure an easier and more secure pilgrimage this year and provide the best health services to pilgrims. The 2022 Gulf Radio and Television Festival launched its grand opening at the Bahrain National Theatre in the presence of senior guests and media representatives from all over the Gulf region. The Information Minister, Dr. Ramzan al naimi opened the ceremony with words of gratitude and appreciation to the guests and participants. He said Bahrain is proud of hosting the festival with the presence of outstanding media professionals and artists with great contributions to the media landscape in the Gulf. He added that the looks for, he looks for further success in taking Gulf media production to advanced levels that keep it in line with the developments of the times and meet the aspirations of the GCC countries. He expressed hope that this edition of the festival will be a continuation of the achievements accomplished by the previous sessions and that its activities and events will boost the Gulf media standards and empower to overcoming various challenges. Gulf Radio and Television General Director and the Festival Secretary General Madri Ben Mbarak Al Ghattani highlighted the events competition agenda and the festival components. He said that the festival seeks to present future ambitious media figures with the opportunity to participate in different seminars and discussions that highlight modern topics in the world of Gulf and Arab media, exchange knowledge, and further broaden horizons. The event then honored Bahrain's outstanding contributors, actors, and directors in the field as they shared their excitement and impression of the event ceremony. The Director General of BIPA, Ra'ad bin Shams, said that the royal decree to expand the scope of the Institute's work to include the private and public sectors would work to achieve a continuous development and in institutional performance in the public and private sectors. He added that the decree will be reflected on the Institute's programs and plans and indicated that the Institute has developed a new strategy that keeps pace with future aspirations. And for more about that, BIPA Director General elaborates. First of all, thank you for this opportunity to discuss the new developments in BIPA. Actually, our new strategy is based on the success and strengths built up through the years of service in the public sector. The verified scientific studies of high return on investment yielded from our capacity building projects has enabled us to provide the same for various institutions beyond the public sector. Therefore, the decree has enabled us to maximize this success and provide what we call edutainment to the private sector as well as to the public sector inside Bahrain and abroad actually. We are building on our key strengths in tailoring the capacity building interventions to the needs of our partners. This is done using the international good practices and sound methodologies. We achieve this by cooperation, co-design and co-production with our international network of associates. Interventions such as training, coaching, mentoring, psychometric assessment, consultancy, and research. These services are aimed at building strong cadre of leaders as well as institutions in line with the competitive vision of Bahrain. Our project-based learning and research-based training ensure the ability to develop world-class leaders and organizations capable of facing heads-on the local and international challenges to face the volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous challenges faced daily and in the future. It is our duty and pleasure to serve our partners their success is our success. Thank you again.